Mina, come on, on, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Back with more Job. The 30 minute message has not been forgotten this week. Oh, it has been busy. Holy smoke. Sunday didn't let me do it. Pretty sure my fault. I was at fault for last Sunday. And this week has not allowed me a chance to catch up. I still plan on putting out a 30 minute message tomorrow. That is the plan. I should have the time. I should. And Sunday will be yet another 30 minute message. So those things are incoming, they are forthcoming. Holy smoke, let's get into this. So tonight we're going to talk about hearing the voice of God, seeing evidences of Him. And this is Job chapter 37. I'm going to start at verse 1. I'm going to read for a little bit. This is Elihu speaking once again to Job and his friends. At this also my heart trembles and leaps from its place. Hear attentively the thunder of his voice and the rumbling that comes from his mouth. He sends it forth under the whole heaven, his lightning to the ends of the earth. After it a voice roars, he thunders with his majestic voice, and he does not restrain them when his voice is heard. God thunders marvelously with his voice. He does great things which we cannot comprehend. For he says to the snow, fall on the earth, likewise to the gentle rain and the heavy rain of his strength. He seals the hand of every man, that all men may know his work. The beasts go into dens and remain in their lairs. From the chamber of the south comes the whirlwind, and cold from the scattering winds of the north. By the breath of God ice is given, and the broad waters are frozen. Also with moisture he saturates the thick clouds. He scatters his bright clouds, and they swirl about, being turned by his guidance, that they may do whatever he commands them on the face of the whole earth. He causes it to come, whether for correction, or for his land, or for mercy. Just some of the ways we can see God in nature. One of the biggest things that Paul talks about in Romans chapter 1 is when you look at, at the earth itself, not necessarily just the universe, I would certainly include the universe in this statement, but just looking at the earth, looking at the way things work, looking at the way things come together, looking at the way things are ordered and make sense. Granted, some things seem a little bit about out of place, some things seem a little bit off, some things even seem absolutely cruel. Earthquakes, hurricanes, tsunamis come to mind. And I would say that the earth isn't perfect, really due to us. When we sinned, God cursed the ground for our sake, Genesis chapter 3. The imperfections in the earth, yeah, God kind of shook things up after we sinned and after we fell. But His glory and His majesty the power of his being, the might of who he is, it can be heard and seen throughout all of nature. Not that God is nature, he's not, he is above nature. And not that we don't understand a lot about nature, we do understand quite a bit more about nature than those guys did back in their time. We can explain with much more accuracy how wind, how clouds, how rain, how thunder and lightning works. That doesn't take away the fact that they got there somehow they are ordered in a certain way somehow. They exist in the, in the form and the manner that they do somehow. I personally don't believe that evolution, just throwing out there, well, random chance, random luck, billions of years, I just don't buy that. I don't believe that. That doesn't make sense to me. Somehow, uh, it, it, by that logic, I should be able to throw in a bunch of metal and gasoline into a hurricane and tornado, maybe shake it up for a few million years, and out should come a Ferrari. How many of you guys believe that's what would come out of that? Probably not any of you. And I just don't see some giant explosion or some giant chaotic goop at the beginning creating everything that there is. And if somehow it did come from a giant goop, it's kind of, I would compare it kind of like to a science lab or to a stew. Someone organized the components and put them where they needed to be so that the outcome became what it is. Things in this universe are a little bit too finely tuned for me to believe in just random chaos and chance and throw in enough years and eventually it'll work out. I don't believe that. Time wears things down. Over time, things move from order to chaos, if anything. So I see a guiding hand and an almighty hand who put it all together and organized it and formed it. Now, as a final note, I do know some Christians that believe in evolution. Like, I do not believe in evolution personally, but I know some Christians that do. And while I disagree with them, the one thing that we agree on is the fact that, one, God exists, and two, for everything to exist in the way, in the order that it does exist. And for all of it to exist, period. 
it wasn't just some accident. It wasn't something random. Nothing random, nothing chaotic could have formed the beauty and the magnificence that you can behold on a beautiful, warm spring or summer day. And on a fall and winter day, for those who are a little bit more cold-natured, I'm not personally. But we can very strongly see the evidence for God just by walking outside. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.